Miwamer Yield is a permanent magnet motor. Miwamer Yield is has developed a powerful permanent magnet motor, patented it, and demonstrated it to the staff and students of a Dutch university. During the demonstration, the mechanical power output was estimated at 250 watts and immediately after the demonstration, the motor was completely taken apart to show that there were no hidden power sources. There is a video showing this demonstration, located at http colon slash slash pzen.com 2010 yield is demonstrates magnet motor at Delft University. Please note that this is an attempted translation of the German language text of his patent and so, the accuracy of the content is not absolutely certain although it is likely to be reasonably accurate. Patent EP 2153515 February 17, 2010 Inventor, Muammer Yield is Device having an arrangement of magnets Abstract The device has a rotating axial drive shaft 5 supported so that it rotates inside a stator 2, which is surrounded by an outer stator 3. The rotor is firmly connected to the drive shaft. The outer stator has dipole magnet 6 which are positioned on the inner surface of a circular cylinder 9. These outer magnets are evenly spaced around the surface of the surrounding cylinder. Description This invention is a device for generating an alternating magnetic field that interacts with a stationary magnetic field. The interaction of a stationary magnetic field with an alternating magnetic field has been used for some time, for example in brushless DC motors and in magnetic levitation. One object of this invention is to provide an improved device for generating an alternating magnetic field that interacts with a stationary magnetic field. This is achieved as described in Claim 1, by the special arrangement of the dipole magnets of the inner stator, the rotor and the outer stator which creates a magnetic effect which keeps the rotor floating freely between the inner stator and the outer stator, and this acts as a magnetic bearing. Surprisingly, it has been shown that the special layout of the dipole magnets of the inner stator, the rotor and the outer stator during rotation of the rotor, generates an alternating magnetic field is which allows a largely loss-free movement of the rotor as it spins between the inner stator and the outer stator. This very useful effect can be used for a variety of technical applications, for example, a particularly low friction bearing is preferred for supporting a shaft which has to rotate at high speed. In the following description, when mathematical terms, especially geometric terms, are used, terms such as parallel, perpendicular, plane, cylinder, angle, etc. as is typical when producing technical drawings, but it must be understood that these things are never achieved in practice, due to the manufacturing tolerances of the components. It is therefore important to realize that this description refers to the ideal situation, which will never be achieved. Therefore, the reader needs to understand that generally accepted tolerances will be involved in practice. The output shaft spins around one axis, called the shaft axis. The shaft itself is preferably constructed as a straight cylinder of circular cross-section. In a preferred embodiment of this invention, the magnets project slightly out of the inner stator. This is also the case for both the rotor and the outer stator. A partial overlap of two magnets is achieved when a plane perpendicular to the shaft axis, passes through both of the two magnets and the two magnets are considered to overlap if this situation occurs. A partial overlap of three magnets occurs when a plane perpendicular to the shaft axis runs through each of the three magnets. The degree of overlapping does not affect the description and the amount of overlap of any two of the three magnets can be anything from 1% to 100%, where the magnets overlap completely. In a particularly preferred embodiment of the invention, the magnets of the inner stator and the rotor are able to align completely. In addition to this, the outer stator is constructed so that it can be rotated around the shaft axis so that the contact ratio between the magnets of the rotor and the magnets of the outer stator can be adjusted to give any degree of overlap from 0% to 100%. Three imaginary cylinders are produced. One by the magnets of the inner stator, a second by the rotor magnets as they spin around the shaft axis and the third is created by the magnets of the outer stator. 
the axis of these three cylinders is the same as the shaft axis. Ideally, the rotor will have the shape of a drum or a cup, that is, a hollow cylinder with a circular cross section or a piece of pipe whose one end face is covered by circular disc. In the center of the disc, the rotor has a hole through which the shaft passes. The disc can also have a collar which is used to clamp the rotor to the shaft by means of a bolt passing through the drive shaft or by grub screws tapped into the collar. Whichever method is used, the rotor magnet assembly is connected securely to the drive shaft. The use of a clamping screw has the advantage of allowing the rotor to be taken apart for maintenance or repair. The hollow cylinder section of the rotor, is arranged so that there is a small air gap between it and both the inner and outer stators. The hollow rotor cylinder has two, or more, permanent magnets mounted on it. These are equally spaced around the circumference of the rotor cylinder and positioned so as to be parallel to the drive shaft axis. The outer stator is cylindrical in shape and surrounds the rotor, leaving a small air gap between them and its axis is aligned with the drive shaft axis. Ideally, the magnets mounted on the inside of the outer stator cylinder are aligned with the drive shaft axis and their pole faces are at right angles to the shaft axis. That is, a line drawn through the north and south pole faces of these magnets will point at the drive shaft, and so one pole face will face the rotor. It is also possible for the magnets of the outer stator to be rod shaped and to form a complete ring around the inner face of the outer stator cylinder. If this is done, then the magnetic rings need to be separated from each other by non-magnetic spacers and the whole length of the outer stator will be covered with these magnetic rings and spacers. In this case, the inner and outer stators are mounted in a fixed relationship to each other by means of brackets or other mounting methods. Ideally, the rotor is held in position by the magnetic fields of the two stators and floats free between them. This is the preferred method. However, it is possible for the drive shaft to run the entire length of the device and to be supported in roller bearings. One possible construction is to have both of the stators made in two separate parts. These need to be exactly symmetrical relative to the drive shaft axis. The outer stator pieces can also be arranged to be capable of rotational adjustment relative to the inner stator which always has a fixed position. Another option with this particular arrangement is to have the distance of the outer stator components adjustable, so that the air gap between the rotor and the outer stator magnets can be manually adjusted. An angle alpha is defined as the angle between the magnetic axis of a magnet of the inner stator and a tangent to the circumference of the inner stator at that point. An angle beta is defined as the angle between the magnetic axis of a rotor magnet and a tangent to the rotor circumference at that point. An angle gamma is defined as the angle between the magnetic axis of a magnet of the outer stator and a tangent to the circumference of the outer stator at that point. In a preferred embodiment of this invention, each of these angles is between 14 degrees and 90 degrees. It is a particular advantage if the permanent magnets of both the inner and outer stator have a either a rectangular or trapezoidal cross section when seen as being cut by a plane perpendicular to the shaft axis. It is also particularly advantageous if the rotor magnets have a circular cross section when viewed as being cut by that plane perpendicular to the shaft axis. Other, non-symmetrical magnet cross sections are possible, such as trapezoidal, triangular, or irregularly shaped cross sections. It is possible for all of the magnets of the inner stator to have identical shapes. Similarly, it is possible for all of the magnets of the outer stator to have identical shapes. It is also possible for all of the rotor magnets to have the same shape. However, the positioning of the magnetic north and south poles of the various magnets will not be identically positioned as will be seen from the following detailed description. The magnets of the inner stator, the rotor and the outer stator have a magnetic orientation which causes them to repel each other at every angular position of the rotor. For example, the magnets of the inner stator can have their north poles facing outwards and in that case, the magnets on the rotor will have their north poles facing inwards towards the inner stator. Similarly, the magnets of the outer stator would then have their south poles facing inwards in order to repel the outer, south poles of the rotor magnets. Further features, 
details and advantages of the invention will be apparent from the following description of an embodiment of the invention and the associated drawings as shown here. Fig 1 is a schematic representation of the device. Fig 2 is an oblique view of the inner stator without magnets and Fig 2b is a view of the inner stator at right angles to the shaft axis. Fig 3 shows a magnet arrangement for the inner stator. Fig 4 a section through the inner stator, along the line AA indicated in Fig 12b. Fig 5 is a view of the fastening device perpendicular to the shaft axis and Fig 5b is a view of the fastening device in the direction of the shaft axis. Fig 6 is a perspective view of the rotor. Fig 7 is a schematic view of the inner stator and rotor. Fig 7b is a diagram of possible angle of the magnetic axis of the magnets in the rotor. Fig 8 shows the magnetic arrangement of the rotor, along the direction XY indicated in Fig 16. Fig 8b is a detailed view of the rotor shown in Fig 8a. Fig 9a to 9h show the angles of sets of magnets installed in the rotor when viewed from the side. These are shown in greater detail later in this description. Fig 10 shows the positions of magnet strings embedded in the rotor. These are given in more detail later on. Fig 11 shows the arrangement of magnets on both stators and the rotor, shown as a section along the shaft axis. Fig 12 shows the arrangement of cylinder and fins on the rotor before the rotor magnets are installed in the spaces between the fins. Fig 12b shows the arrangement of the magnets of the rotor, as seen in a view at right angles to the longitudinal axis of the rotor. Fig 13 shows the step positioning of the magnets of the rotor. This view shows the surface of the rotor and its shaft, opened out and laid flat. That is, the rectangle show here is actually the whole of the cylindrical surface of the rotor. In this view, the fins between the magnets are not show in order to emphasize the stepping of the magnets relative to each other. Detailed Description Rotor Section Inner Stator Clamp to hold inner stator stationary Fig 1 shows a schematic representation of the device having an inner stator 2, a rotor 1 and an outer stator 3, which are arranged coaxially around the shaft axis 50 of a pivoting rod-shaped shaft 5. The cylindrical inner stator 2 has at each end, an end cap 13 which is in the form of a circular disc with a ball race bearing 11 mounted on it. The bearing 11, maintains the position of the inner stator 2 relative to shaft 5. The drive shaft 5 is normally made. From a non-magnetic material such as plastic, not steel, and typically, has a diameter of 10 mm to 40 mm and a length of 100 mm to 400 mm. The inner stator 2 has a core 12 with magnets 8 mounted on its outer surface. The inner stator 2 is held stationary by a mounting device 4, which is secured in position in a mechanical housing, not shown, and is held firmly fixed in this way. The rotor 1 consists of two mirror image rotor drums, each with a pipe section and a circular disc section which is clamped rigidly to drive shaft 5 by means of grub screws 10. Each of the rotor drums has magnet 7 mounted on it. These magnet 7, are positioned in 5 distinct places and they have one magnetic pole facing towards the shaft and the other pole facing radially outwards. The rotor drums are positioned so that there is a cylindrical air gap between them and the inner stator 2. This air gap is usually of the order of 3 mm to 50 mm. Although the two halves of the rotor are separated by the clamping mechanism for which prevents the inner stator from rotating, the rotor halves are positioned so that the magnets within them are balanced and so there is no irregular force generated when shaft 5 is spun at high speed. At the ends of the rotor drums there are magnets 700 as the objective of this design is to have the rotor suspended magnetically. The outer stator 3 is composed of two separate half cylinders 9. Each of these cylinders 9, contains magnets 6 mounted on its inner face. Although each section of the outer stator consists of a hollow cylinder, the outer ends of the stator housing form a complete disc which surrounds the drive shaft 5 and forming a complete enclosure rather than leaving the device open at the ends. There is an air gap between the faces of the magnets mounted on the inner surface of the cylindrical frame 9 and the faces of the magnets mounted on the rotor. These sets of magnets face each other and the air gap between them is also typically 3 mm to 50 mm. 
the magnets on each of the stators are parallel to the shaft axis 50. The outer stators is constructed so that it can be moved relative to the inner stator, thus altering their magnetic overlap. This alteration can be made by moving the outer stator when the motor is actually running. The magnets designated 6, 7, and 8, are dipole magnets and in a preferred embodiment, these are permanent magnets, for example, consisting of small co, samarion cobalt, and slash or and feb, neodymium iron boron. It is also possible for one or more of these magnets to be an electromagnet. The magnetic flux density of the magnets 6, 7, and 8 is preferably in a range from 0.4 to 1.4 tesla. The frame is preferably made from a non-magnetic material such as aluminium with a wall thickness from 2 mm to 10 mm. Fig 12 shows an inner stator frame made from a non-magnetic material, such as aluminium or copper. The frame 12 has a circular cylinder 120 which has attached to its outer surface, radial ribs 121. Each of these ribs extends along the central axis of the cylinder 120 along the full length of the cylinder, that is, from its base to the top surface. The ribs are distributed uniformly over the cylinder circumference, forming grooves 122. Cylinder 120 has a central hole along its axis for shaft 5 to run through. Both of the end surfaces of cylinder 120 are recessed to accommodate one of the ball bearings 11. The diameter of the stator core 12 is typically 50 mm to 500 mm. With a length of 100 mm to 300 mm. The width of the ribs 121 is generally not more than 100 mm and is usually about 20% of the length of the ribs 121. Fig 12b shows a schematic representation of the inner stator 2. The inner stator 2 is composed of the inner stator frame 12 the magnets 8 and the end caps 13. The magnets 8 are of equal length but their length is less than the length of the stator core 12. These magnets form the outer surface of the stator. They are seated in the grooves 122 and held in position by the ribs 121. The first magnet 8 to 1 is inserted flush with the end cap 13. The other Magnets 8 each have an axial offset V along the shaft axis 50 arranged so that there is an even stepping of the magnets with the final magnet 8 to 10 butting up against the second end plate 13. The axial offset V is the total overall gap W divided by N minus 1, where N is the number of magnets and so, V varies with the number of magnets used. In a typical arrangement, V is 5% of the length of the magnets 8. The end caps 13 have a diameter of 50 mm to 500 mm and a thickness of 5 mm to 20 mm. A typical length for the magnets 8 is 100 mm. The magnet dimensions are arranged so that when they are positioned in the grooves 122, the inner stator 2 has a substantially uniform outer surface. Fig 13 shows an opened out view of the outer surface of the inner stator 2. Here, 10 magnets 8 are arranged with even spacing. The underside of the magnets taper in the direction of the shaft axis 50 and so they have a lesser width near the center of the stator than they do at the outside surface. The first magnet 8 to 1 is positioned with its end face aligned with the base 125 of the inner stator core 12. The remaining 9 magnets, 8 to 2 to 8 to 10, are each offset by the amount V with the last magnet 8 to 10 reaching the top surface of the inner stator core 126. Fig 14 shows a cross section through the inner stator 2 along the plane AA of Fig 12B. The inner stator 2 has a hollow cylinder 120, through which the central axis of the shaft 5 passes. Running along the outer surface of the cylinder are the ribs 121. The hollow cylinder 120 typically has a diameter of 100 mm and a length of 170 mm. In the gaps formed between the ribs 121 the magnets 8 are placed. When seen in the plane AA these magnets have a trapezoidal cross section. These magnets have two magnetic poles and the magnets are positioned so that the magnetic axis 80 which runs through the two poles is radial within the section plane AA. 
an angle. Alpha formed at the intersection of the magnetic dipole axis 80 of a magnet 8 and the tangent 81 to the ribs 121 can have a value between 14 degrees and 90 degrees. In the case shown in Fig 14 the angle alpha is 90 degrees. Fig 15A shows the fastening device 4 in a view perpendicular to the shaft axis 50. The fastening device 4 has an inner hollow cylinder 40 with a smaller radius and an outer fixing ring plate 41 with larger radius. The inner hollow cylinder 40 and the outer ring fastening plate 41 are connected together. The hollow cylinder 40 is used for receiving and fixing the inner stator 2 by means of screws 10. The fastening ring 41 is part of a mechanical housing, not shown, for holding the device firmly positioned. Fig 15B shows the fastening device 4 in a view in the direction of the shaft axis 50. The mounting ring plate 41 has at its periphery, 4 screws 10 for attachment to the mechanical housing of the hollow cylinder 40 which has, on its circumference, a number of screws 10 for fixing the inner stator in place. Fig 16 is a view of the rotor 1, which is clamped to shaft 5 by means of the screws 10. The rotor 1 consists of two separate drums attached to a central hollow shaft. Mounted in its outer surface are a series of magnets 7 sunk into circular holes. The rotor itself is constructed using a non-magnetic material such as aluminium or copper. The distance between the two rotor drums is 15 mm and they have an outer diameter of 165 mm, a height of 70 mm and a wall thickness of 26 mm. Each rotor drum has a top surface annular disc 102, into which two or more magnets 700 are sunk. These are positioned uniformly around the circumference of the disc as shown in the diagram. The magnetic dipole axis of magnet 700 is parallel to the shaft axis 50. Fig 17 is a schematic representation of the possible orientations of the rotor magnet 7 when seen as viewed looking parallel to the shaft axis 50. The magnetic dipole axis 70 of rotor magnet 7 is in a plane which is radial to the shaft axis 50. The angle beta between the magnetic dipole axis 70 and the tangent 71 breaks through the outer periphery of the hollow cylinder 101 of the rotor 1 and this angle can have values between 14 degrees and 90 degrees. FIG17B is a schematic view of one rotor drum and part of the inner stator 2, where the view is perpendicular to the shaft axis 50. The rotor 1 is clamped to the shaft 5 by the screws 10 and held rigidly in position. The shaft 5 passes through a ball bearing inset into the inner stator 2 and so can rotate freely relative to the inner stator. The rotor has two drum, or bell shaped, sections which surround the inner stator. The rotor 1 has a hollow cylindrical section 101, which extends away from the top surface 102. Since the inner stator is fixed and prevented from rotation by its anchoring device, component 4 in Fig 1, the rotor spins the hollow cylinder 101 around it. The hollow cylinder 101 of rotor 1 is separated from the inner stator 2 by an annular air gap G1. The hollow cylinder 101 of rotor 1 has magnet 7 sunk into holes in it. The top surface 102 of the rotor 1 also has holes in it and these are used to install the magnet 700 in it. Fig 18 shows the outer surfaces of the two halves of the rotor drum 1, laid out flat instead of curved into a circle in the XY plane shown in Fig 16. This surface is perpendicular to the shaft axis 50 and rows of magnet 7 are positioned in rows 701 to 708. Each of these rows is slightly offset in relation to the row beside it, resulting in a zigzag layout of the magnet 7. Fig 18b shows, in enlarged detail, the positioning of the magnet 7 shown in Fig 18a. The centers of the magnet 7 in the rows 705 and 706 have a constant separation F between their edges. The distance between any two adjacent rows, say, 705 and 706, is chosen so that the arrangement is as shown in Fig 18b with constant magnetic separation of length D between the edges of the magnets in adjacent rows. For example, the magnets 
7051 and 7052 are exactly the same distance apart as magnets 7061 and 7062, the adjacent row 706. Also, the centers of the three magnets 7051, 7052 and 7061 form an isosceles triangle. This relationship holds for all of the magnets in all seven series 701 to 708. Although the magnets 7 are shown in the diagrams as being circular, they could well be other shapes such as square or hexagonal. The length d ranges from about 3 mm to 50 mm. A distance which is particularly preferred, is 5 mm. The distance f ranges from about 10 mm to 70 mm. Fig 19a shows a longitudinal section through the mechanical housing for the device, i.e. a section parallel to the shaft axis 50. The mechanical housing includes the support piece 4 for clamping the inner stator 2 to prevent it from rotating, the mount 19 for guiding the movable halves of the outer stator 3, and a rotating threaded rod 14 which can move both halves of the outer stator 3 relative to the rotor and slash or the inner stator 2. The gear shaft 14 has two threaded sections with threads which run in opposite directions, right hand and left hand threads. The rotation of this shaft causes the two halves of the outer stator housing to move in a symmetrical manner in opposite directions, inwards or outwards. The guide devices 19 are mounted on the gear shaft 14 and so they only move in one plane. The outer cylindrical sections 9 which house the outer stator 3 are firmly attached to the end caps 19. Typically, this mechanical housing has a height of 400 to 600 mm, a width of 400 mm and a depth of 530 mm. Fig 19b is a section through the outer stator 3, the section plane is perpendicular to the shaft axis 50. The outer stator 3 has arranged in it, a ring of non-magnetic fasteners 18, between which magnets 6 are secured. For reasons of clarity, only some of the magnets 6 are shown although these magnets are mounted on the entire circumference of the outer stator 3. The size of the magnet 6 and the non-magnetic fasteners 18 is chosen so that they form a hollow cylinder whose central axis is in the direction of the shaft axis 50. The magnetic dipole axis 60 of the magnet 6 are perpendicular to the shaft axis 50. An angle gamma between the magnetic dipole axis 60 and a tangent 61 to the outer periphery of the hollow cylindrical outer stator 3 is between 14 degrees and 90 degrees. The outer stator 3 is connected to the mounting block 4, which includes the mounting columns 20. Fig 20 is a perspective view of the mechanical housing for the device. Additional practical details are available in the patent.